All right, guys, today we're gonna talk about lemon tetras. I just got these guys. I got them from my local fish auction at my fish club, and I got a killer deal on them, and I am so happy. What a generous offering um, of not having a minimum bid, or maybe it was like five bucks or something, because I think I got them for like six dollars for eight of them. I, I couldn't even get one for that price normally. So thank you so much, whoever had them. They had a bunch of them. These are beautiful fish. They weren't colored up at the auction. They looked more like this rainbow fish, or this rainbow fish here. Um, they were pale. Uh, when they get shipped or transported, or oftentimes in the pet store, they get stressed, and then they're not happy, and they get discolored. And even though this is such a busy community tank, They've got plenty of room to swim around and depth to swim back into. Uh, and because of that and all of the fine leaves and uh, tank landmarks, they're really happy. So these, these fish are interesting in that the way that they uh, spawn and reproduce is they actually find landmarks. So maybe this tree over here or this plant over here, the... Um, water wisteria or maybe the water sprite down there um, the water sprite down here the idea being that uh, now they'll have a breeding ground uh, to stay in also you're going to catch a sneak peek of a uh, gudgeon who is defending uh, his den from a catfish that can smell the eggs inside so hopefully this water sprite will serve as a nursery for some of the tetra species I have in here because I've had a few babies appear in the past tetra wise but not a ton so uh, I would like to see them reproduce I would like to get a bigger tank and uh, actually have you know like 50 of these lemon tetras I think that would be awesome they love being in big groups the bigger the group the better they feel um, they are a really beautiful fish if we can get one to <clears throat> stay still which is hard because they have a very quick metabolism uh, they've got a ruby red uh, iris so the colored part of their eye is actually ruby red they're semi translucent with orange uh, to red fins depending on the strain uh, and then if you want to find the alpha male in the group, the way to tell apart males and females is by looking for um, a black line around their fins, um, around specifically their dorsal and uh, anal fin. So this guy chasing, that's also another good sign that, that it may be the alpha, but right here we've got the nice black tip to the fin and if it would stay still you'd be able to make out that there's actually a black um, bar that runs all the way around the fin and that's how you can tell it's a male the bigger the black area the more dominant the male generally uh, also males and females here's another male um, not holding still long enough for you there you see the black there um, Males and females generally, here's two males, they usually pause when they pass each other, and oftentimes they will joust. And so, let me let me get you situated. Um, so when they are in a tank, they will use these landmarks, uh, such as the stick, or the high point of a stick, or a plant, and they will, uh, the males will perch up there and, and kind of strut their stuff, and they, uh, put their fins straight up and down and they try to make themselves look as big and tough as possible and uh, then the other males who are closest in size pair off with them and they they basically do kind of a west side story uh, knife fight like like I said earlier uh, kind of a Michael Jackson thing so this guy the male the alpha male he's actually bumped his nose because he's gone after some of the other fish so uh, ferociously so clearly they haven't established their pecking order all the way yet um, but he's gone after them so hard that he actually uh, smashed himself into the heater when I was watching him a while back so he's got some uh, burn or bump on his nose here that's definitely the alpha of the group for now or he wants to assert that um, but yeah, so they joust at these landmarks and they don't end up hurting each other but they just display their colors and they they use all their me metabolic energy and uh, 
circle around in, in for sometimes up to 30 minutes and then they'll go off find a female the female will have watched this spectacle and in the wild it happens by the thousands and they shoal up by the edge of the river and they need finely leafed plants so like these sword ferns not going to cut it rocks not going to cut it but uh, the kabamba in there, the water sprite, the wisteria, um, basically things that grow in shallow water quickly with fine leaves, um, it perfect for them. And so I have kind of a living mat of different, uh, uh, different things down in here, and you can see that it will make a great nursery. Again, just wanted to show you the gudgeon, uh, peacock gudgeon, doing his false tail thing saying uh, he's down in a lava rock and he's saying uh i'm i'm a fish or whatever i'm i'm here i'm hanging out and uh it's got a he's got a fake eye spot on that tail but the catfish have been circling around so there must be eggs in there that they can smell and they want to eat and he also is bringing fresh water in but that's not the species we're talking about is it guys all right, so back to the lemon tetras, and pardon the algae on the glass, uh, the back of the tank, I need to do some scrubbing. So uh, they really like clear water, water that's shallow and moves uh, slowly to moderately. Um, they hang out in those big groups because the coloration uh, with the black bars and then the orange on top of the clear and all the reflecting of the scales and things, uh, it really causes them to confuse predators in a big group and they look like one large fish or it's hard for them, a uh, predatory fish, to, to pin one down. And so they're pretty successful at surviving in the wild, uh, although wild specimens do tend to have nipped up fins. Now they are uh, being bred in captivity and that is what I am trying to do also. And optimal living conditions, which we'll say optimal breeding conditions, is 82 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, 28 Celsius. Uh, we're going to say pH is 6.5 and a TDS that's fairly low with uh, a little bit of tannin in the water, um, maybe some uh, catapa leaves or almond leaves. That is very soothing to them. Um, they're used to tanniny water. Even though it's clear and moving, it's got tannins. So um, I just want you to appreciate how beautiful this fish is, really. And when they move together, uh, they kind of have a weaving pattern. So they do a almost a... A perfect weave or helical uh, one leapfrogs the other one when they get scared and so if the, if I bump the tank or something a lot of times if they're all kind of hanging out and just relaxing they'll they'll get form up in a school and uh, get tight together so basically um, this fish has been in the hobby a really long time uh, in 1932, there's mention of them in Europe and as well as in, in uh, America and Mexico, so North America, in Canada, and in the United States. Uh, they were brought into the aquarium hobby because they were found at the mouth, uh, or not the actual mouth, but near the entrance of the Amazon River and also upstream quite a ways of the main river proper and all the little side tributaries. The place where they have the best coloring and where most of these pet fish are sourced from is going to be Rio Tapos, Tapeos and uh, the Zingu branch of the river, which has now been dammed up and is facing a little bit of a crisis on the fish end of things because we're seeing um, species like uh, plecos and things not having their shallow water and the the wood in shallow water that they like and hiding spots, but rather 40 feet deep of water or, you know, 10, 12, 15 meters of water uh, over what is normal. And usually that's only the wet season. And so these fish that like shallow waters are not doing well in the dammed areas. And hopefully they will be able to acclimate and figure it out. But um, just kind of a side note on the ecology of where they come from and some of the threats that face them. Also, logging is another big threat for these guys because people log the forest or they burn them down for farmland, and then there's nothing to hold back the muddy silt that runs into the river that has little um, 
nutri nutrient value to the other plants, and that can cause deoxy deoxygenation of the water. And, uh, you know, that also leads me to mentioning if you're trying to breed them or if you just want them to color up nicely. I had it in here early, but I turned it off for the video. And here, we'll see if we can zoom in on this guy just because he is the alpha and he's got nice color other than his boo-boo on his nose. Uh, but basically, um, they like moving water quite a bit. And so if you've got to hang off the back, that works fine. If you've got, there you can see the black right there. So that's a good way to tell that it's a male and a strong male is the thicker that black line is. So, um, but yeah, so you want moving water, you want uh, bubbles and air. So the more you aerate the water and move it around, the better. Um, it just, it simulates life in the river and uh, makes them happy and, and, and comfy. So if you want to feed them and get them to their full color, definitely lots of protein. Um, they are micro predators, so Daphnia and bloodworms or micro worms, anything like that that's alive, they're going to love. They love that stuff. Um, and uh, they'll eat flake food, as I was just giving them at the beginning of the video, uh, no problem, so they're an easy to take care of fish, but I just, I recommend highly, if you can, to get them some live food as a treat once in a while. Also, they live quite a while for little tetras, um, they can live up to eight years, some people even say nine years, uh, more average is five or six years. Uh, and they are just, you know, they've got a little bit of personality in the group already. I've only had them for a couple days and I know that there's three, there's one shy one, there's one twitchy one. And then there's the, the alpha male that's kind of running around bruising, picking on everyone. Uh, just making sure that in this new tank, everyone knows who's boss and that's normal. Um, the, the bigger the group, the more that gets divided up a little bit, but with eight of them in this case, uh, they'll, they'll kind of go off and do their own thing when they're feeling happy and calm. And it's not unless that they're stressed that they actually will all school up together. So when I first put them in, they all hung out at the very bottom together in the fine leaf plants. And then within 24 hours, they started swimming all over and they do need a little bit of space. I would recommend at least a 20 long and six of them, uh, in a, in a tank, um, more preferably like a 40 breeder or bigger so that they can have some room to run. They're small. They only grow to about one and a half to two and a half inches, but, um, you know, you just, you want to give a, an animal room to run if it wants it. Uh, even this four, even this 40 gallon tank, uh, they have managed that the one male has managed to smash himself. So, um, the, the other thing that's kind of cool about them is their name, which is Haif Esobrakon, uh, Pulcher Repinus, which, sorry, I probably butchered that, but basically that's Greek. And so it's an old name. Um, and it, it's not as old as Greek, but the, the naming system now we use Latin and it's agreed upon. Uh, but the Greek name, uh, is from the early tur turn of the 20th century. And, uh, it basically means of lesser status is the first part. Not very nice, but that just means they're a small tetra. And then, but, uh, the next part says beautiful fins. So poultry means beautiful or, or colorful, vivid. Um, delightful. And so you'll also note that uh, some of the Crebensis or, uh, you know, Pelvicromis uh, species, Pelvicacromis species uh, have poultry as a suffix to that. So um, that's about all I think that we need to cover in this video, but um, they're happy in pH 6 to 7.5, TDS 0 to 200, temperature 72 is on the really low end, but they'll survive, 68 on the high end, and then they really like around 80, 82. 82 is enough to kick off spawning, and uh, you want to keep them in groups. They're very communal fish, and, uh, you know, they, they like to do their thing with their pecking order and their... Um, 
establishing their shoal, who's who and what's what. So thank you guys so much for staying tuned and for checking out these new and wonderful fish. I highly recommend you get some. They are very beautiful. Don't be deceived at the pet store if they're stressed out and washed out. If you get them home, give them space and take care of them. They will color up nicely for you. So even with this filming that I'm doing with the reflection and the, the bad, uh, the bad camera work here, uh, you can see that they're, they're shaping up to be quite beautiful adults. So, all right, guys, uh, I hope you enjoy your day and your fish. Take care of your fish. Take care of each other. And remember, swim on, guys.